What's good, man? You're in the middle with your boy Jiggy. This is Reckless Type. I want to thank you for joining me today. We are in East LA. We're in a special location. We're linking today with the face of Cranes, my guy Brian, one of the most popping brands in LA. Let's waste no time. Let's get to it. I'm excited. Come on. What's good, man? Welcome back to Reckless Hype. You and I've been with your boy Jiggy. I want to thank you for being here. It's been a minute since I've seen you guys. Today, I am joined by a very special guest, Brian, the voice of Cranes. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm pretty good, brother. How you feeling? Good, bro. I mean, I, I haven't done an episode in what has it been, like, for four months? So I'm just happy to be back in the lab, man, and I'm in a beautiful space. It feels like I'm home. I appreciate that, man. We're good like to I'm have home. you here, bro. How you doing, though? Pretty good, man. Just, you know, uh, Getting the store ready to open though in a, in a few weeks, you know. So just a lot of preparation, a lot of work, but I'm good, man. Good. How about good. yourself? Good, man. I uh, I feel like this year is in a lot of ways a second chance for a lot of us, you know, in some in some shape or form, a chance to reassess and do things and and build. So I'm good, and I appreciate that. You know, I always ask people when I start. I always ask them how they're doing. Nobody ever asked me how the fuck I'm doing. I mean, doing. you kind of should, man. It's, like, it's rude if you don't. It's the southern hospitality. It is New Orleans, man. So that's what it it's is. Just in me, bro. That's exactly what it is, man. Well, good, man. Like I said, I'm excited to be here today. I'm starting the Impact series, which is basically. I want to be able to tell the story behind streetwear brands and ultimately how clothing is one part of the brand, but ultimately the story, the face, is what builds it and what drives it. Yeah. And obviously you're an entrepreneur, you've been mm -hmm. here, but before we get into all the clothing, all the different stuff, I want to know, know more about your background, kind of where you're from, where you're raised, and those types of things, so. Okay, um, born and raised in New Orleans, uh, 1991, March 26, bro. Uh, born and raised there, Graduated that at makes 19. You, uh, that makes you a... Uh, uh, I'm an Aries. You're an Aries. Yeah, bro, fire sign. We, we chill, man, like, you know. Got an Aries back there. We Come don't, on. We don't, we don't, we don't. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> you know, but yeah, right. bro, born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, my mom's, my mom and my dad, they're from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. She kind of moved to New Orleans uh, when she had me and she went to college. Or she had me during college, actually, her wow. uh, sophomore year. Wow. And, so, yeah. And then, obviously, being in the South and growing up in the South, because obviously me as well, too, there's something about the energy like that's hard to describe. How would you describe, ultimately, your upbringing with your family and how that played a role in what you saw? Well, man, I'm, I'm one of 13 kids, bro. So it was 13 kids? 13 kids. And I'm the smack in the middle. I'm the middle child. Really? Black sheep, middle child, bro. Wow. A thousand percent. But I... Uh, it was it was great growing up. Obviously, it wasn't it wasn't the easiest thing, but we always had each other. So you know, I enjoyed it. I was inspired a, a lot about a lot from my siblings. I'd say, um, and my parents also. What was the inspiration that you were finding? Was it music? Was it sports? Was it women? Was it well, all of the above? Well, to answer your question, music was actually my first love. Mm. Um, I'm a drummer. I grew up playing drums. Really? Yeah. I grew up playing drums in the church. I uh, probably started out when I was like three or four years old. Um, my mom ended up getting married when I was five, and my stepdad happened to be a drummer as well. So it kind of just worked out. And um, I just kind of was in ministry playing drums, man, from probably the age six all the way up to 18. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And music being the source of what ultimately allows you to see that there was more, I'd imagine. A thousand percent. Um, just growing up, I always remember uh, my earliest memory with music was, uh, what's the name? Uh, they were signed to Jermaine Dupri, uh, Criss Cross, mm. is it? Yeah. Um, I had the Criss Cross braids, bro. Wow. When I was a little kid, um, I used to sing the song all the time. That's, yeah. that's like my, my biggest memory from childhood, like just riding with my mom, singing Criss Cross, and like her hyping me up to it. But um, playing drums, dude, like, I guess just the beat 
and the rhythm of drums just kind of just fed my energy since I've been little, man. And like even now, like my daughter, like when she hears a song, bro, she just it's in her blood. Just starts going. It's bro. in her so blood. It's in the blood, man. It, it has to be. Who do you listen to now these days? Twenty twenty one. Who you listening to? Right now, honestly, you was playing a Blue Bucks a second ago. You I know was, that's that's real LA shit, right there. Blue Bucks, I'm really fucking with Come them, on, bro. Man. Like that's, that energy, man. Like sometimes, they make. It's time you just need that, bro. bro. Man, you they just, make me feel like when I'm in a house, just cleaning up, bro. I feel like I have that house party energy that yeah. I had when I first came to LA in yeah. 2015, bro. Like, wow. they just made me kind of jump, especially after being in a quarantine for so long. Man. But uh, aside from them, uh, something that's kind of been on repeat for me is like, still Party Next Door's album. Really? Um, the, the Colors one or which no, one? No, 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 his newest. Oh, uh, the, the, the Mobile, the Mobile. mobile. Party wow. Mobile, bro. Like, I fuck with that album so wow. heavy. I don't know why, but Party's like, since I heard him in 20, 14, 15, like, mm -hmm. it was like, this that nigga, bro. He really is, bro. He, he that nigga. He really is. He had a he had a little hiatus for a second. And bro for sure. Came back but and when he, he came do. back, bro, I felt it was still on the That's same fire. par. You That's know? fire. So you can do all kind of ranges of music. That's cool. Of course. That's cool. Now, obviously, we're in LA. I probably should have stated that before we, we got into this part. <laughs> we're in this beautiful location. Appreciate it. Los Angeles is a far, far, far away from New Orleans, bro. It's a long ways. Super far, man. What even brought you out here? What allowed you to be able to transition into this space? Dude, uh, opportunity, man. Um, being from the South, growing up, there was a lot of like barriers racial barriers a lot of times. I grew up in an area or in a small city in town called Destrehan. Louisiana is like uh, 30 minutes outside of New Orleans, man, but it's where, we, where the city's located right along the Mississippi River. And for like 10 to 15 miles, there's this like slave plantation after slave wow. plantation. It's just, they still do like farmer's markets. White people still get married there. Confederate like flags Confederate and shit. Confederate flags and shit. So it's like, that's kind of the energy of the place I grew up, bro. So, you know, like, I was just inspired about my entire life from that experience, you know? No, definitely. I mean, like, I feel like it's hard to describe the energy of the South. It's almost like literally the air is thicker, almost the humidity, but in actuality, racial barriers in a place like New Orleans, in a place like Florida and Georgia and Arkansas, these small towns, you don't, understand the privilege of being in a place like LA until right. you go somewhere right. like that, bro. Right. Like just really what it means to be black in those different places. A thousand percent. But I was having a conversation um, the other day um, with Kari and we were talking, it was kind of a joke, it was talking about like, the, I, there's something special though about the identity of being black in a place like that though. There's something richer about it. Because, it is, man. Because of the, the barriers, because of the, the, the privilege that didn't exist. You know, did you find yourself encountering racial, you know, issues growing up? Was there certain things that you faced, like literally, personally? I mean, there was always different, you know, racial tones all the time. Like growing up, um, just adolescent dating, fourth grade, fifth grade. Like there, there were kids of all like races in my school. Like, and I was a kid who liked girls of any race. It didn't matter. So mm -hmm. like, when I'd have situations where I try to like date for whatever a fourth grader knew about dating in fourth grade, a white girl, she straight up be like, ah, nah, my dad's not gonna let that happen. Wow. And like for, for me being a kid, like, you know, I knew what it was in Louisiana, like where we're from, but at the same time, it was like, damn, I thought we were so far removed from this stigma or this. This is the 90s. Bro, this is the 90s, uh, yeah. uh, uh, early 2000s yeah. at least. And it's like, man, we're still on the same time. And it's like at school, we weren't obviously doing the same things that our parents had gone through, like with segregation and shit like that. But it was like some of the same racial undertones still existed. So it was, it was pretty wild, like navigating, bro. And I mean, it's still crazy. Let's be real. like this last couple of months has shown us like we're not even really far removed from that shit still to this day mm -hmm. you know with the capital and all that crazy shit that 100%. happens this, sh this shit still happens that shit still happens okay so obviously being in transition in terms of moving and coming out here and being out here you've made this your home you've built this place we actually met at the melrose trading post True. which is shout out to that place it's, True. A, it's a beautiful place it's great man um have you been able to say that you can call this place home now? Is this somewhere that you consider to be where you're at or is there still a little piece of you that's like, you know? 
without a doubt, this is home, man. Like, there's nothing in LA I don't like besides traffic. <laughs> wow. The weather is amazing. Uh, like I said, you meet people like I wouldn't have met you guys. It's a fact. Had I not been here, you know, it's a like. Fact. Um, but Los Angeles, man, it's inspired me so much to things I can attain in life and what I can actually accomplish. Like being where I'm from, the the highest person on like, you know, owning anything that we saw was like maybe the the corner store. And even that, that was still like a, a Asian person mm -hmm. who wasn't from here. No knock to them, but it was our community. But we don't even have someone like us running the grocery store where we're getting all our guards from exactly beer, like chips. Exactly. You know, ETC. But yeah, bro, like I love it here. I'm I'm here to stay for sure. Why do you think that is though? Like I'm curious. We was talking about the other day too of just like how it's so hard to keep the dollar in the black community. Obviously, we know there's little reasons for that, but do you, do you see that in your own personal way in terms of the decisions that you make being a black entrepreneur and seeing that? Well, first off, it's, it's pretty tough to keep it in the black community. We first would need to expand our businesses. Like, let's, let's use the grocery store, for example. If I wanted to go get groceries, how many black grocery stores are there for me to really Mm -hmm. realistically go shop at, mm -hmm. or, or black banks even. They exist. I'd have to drive an hour out of the way to go find a black bank. You know, I think with, with growth and time, it'll become easier for us to, like, uh, you know, pour our money right back in, into us. But at the same time, uh, we don't quite understand how our money works. Like, as soon as we get it, we go and spend it in another community, like, that fast, bro. So, I don't know, like... I really would like to figure out a way for us to pull our money into us. I mean, but it starts with what you're doing, right? I feel like ultimately that's what makes this so unique and special is entrepreneurship has become something that in the black community is ingrained in us mm -hmm. because of what exists in society. You know? mm -hmm. So I feel like whether you're an artist, you're an athlete, you know, you make clothes, the case may be it. There's something there's, there's built different, just being built different. Yeah. You know? That's what it is. Um, okay, so it's time to get into the fit, okay? You know, we did the backstory. It's time to talk about what we got on this wall, because I know people are looking at the hats. They're Man. looking at, at this crew neck. It's going crazy. Um, the face, the name, we're here. Cranes, what is the story behind the brand? How did we, how did we get to this point? Okay. What is Cranes? So Cranes, Cranes is actually an acronym that stands for Creativity Reigns Above, Negative Energy Subsides. And, um, uh, I first came up with Cranes, man. Uh, I was in art school in Houston. I went to the Art Institute of Houston. Um, and in class, we were just kind of talking about brand identity and like how these brands like McDonald's, for example, when you see that golden arch, you know what it is every time, uh, mm -hmm. or, or Louis Vuitton even. And uh, when I started Cranes, it, it was first a menswear blog on Tumblr. But I always Tumblr's loved... the shit. I'm sorry, I mean to joke. Tumblr is the shit, bro. If you still on Tumblr in 2021, you're tapped in. You lit. You well, lit. We, we old. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but you still lit. I feel That's you, it. bro. That's it. But um, I, I started on Tumblr, just menswear blog, reblogging looks and styles I like. At the time, 2011, I was really inspired by this uh, menswear blog uh, called Street Etiquette. I don't even think it's around anymore, but it was. Two, two black guys from New York, bro, they were just like super fly, like, they'd wear like suits, uh, like casual, like Docs and Clarks and just different wow. chinos and things like that at the time, bro, and I was extremely inspired and we were a streetwear uh, blog, like I said, and mm -hmm. then around 2012, I made my first t-shirt and I've kind of been doing clothes from then, bro, and it's kind of just followed me all the way to LA. And it's evolved, bro. Like it is. some of these pieces, I'm looking. We just did the most recent drop, which was about what, like I say, we like I'm, like I'm, I'm <laughs> I feel you know, we. 
um, about a month ago, right? It's been about a month, yeah. And it's crazy because it ties into everything that we just spent a few minutes talking about. Mm -hmm. Jim Crow is dead is was the drop, right? Or just the official... Well, Jim Crow is dead is actually just a, a tag or a moniker I go by with the company, man. It's like McDonald's, I'm loving it. Wow, okay. Makes sense. Okay. But Jim Crow is dead for cranes. Um, Jim Crow is dead just means exactly what it sounds like. Jim Crow is dead, we not having it. Mm -hmm. We, we, we want to own everything we do. We want full rights to our music. We want full creative rights to do whatever we want to do in Hollywood. You know, we, we just want our, our own identity. We want to be able to be us. So Jim Crow is dead is just me kicking in the door and saying like, whatever we do, we doing this shit because there is no racism, there is no colorism, there is no classism that can stop us, bro. That's Jim Crow shit. is dead. It's like a level of rebellion with that shit. A thousand percent. But to answer your question from earlier, Children of Rage is actually the name of the collection. That's okay. And okay. Um, Children of Rage, man, it's another one's kind of self-exclamatory, man. We're, we're, we're tired of the Trayvon Martin situations. We're tired of the George Floyd situations. Mm -hmm. We're tired of the Breonna Taylor situations, mm -hmm. bro. And we just not having this shit no more. Rage mm -hmm. is the next step mm -hmm. to our emotions. Like, it's natural. It is what it is. They, they like us to turn our cheek and just keep getting slapped on these cheek, take it, take it, take it. But nah, bro, fuck that. And how do you take that as being the designer in the face of the brand and trans transforming that and putting into clothing, right? So I'm looking at some of these pieces mm -hmm. here, right? The black, right? Obviously, that might look familiar to some people to some extent yeah. of what that familiar is. The yeah. white, right? Yeah. yeah. But like, how how does that? How, what is your process? Like, I guess that I'm basically saying in terms of like, how do you take those emotions, those feelings, all that real shit that you feel you've experienced, but then display that in clothing in a beautiful way? Well, to be honest, this piece, uh, this black one in particular, um, I'm sure people see the design concept is extremely similar to what Off-White did. Exactly. Um, and it's no knock to that brand. Uh, it's an amazing brand. But for me, when I saw Off-White or I hear Off-White, I think a whole nother thing than See, but let's talk about, bro. For. Let's talk about, bro, for a okay. second. I'm curious, because in a lot of ways in the community, there's been some backlash with the way that he goes about what he does. Mm -hmm. How do you personally look at somebody like that who has reached the high highest of heights, but in a lot of ways maybe to to the common eye doesn't really keep it a buck? For me, it's like you know, thank you for showing us it's possible to kick through that glass ceiling and be creative director for a brand like Louis Vuitton. You know, mm -hmm. thank you for showing young black kids who are even younger than me that they could be a designer to that level. But at the same time, I obviously, I don't know his full story with the off-white thing, but there's things you hear in the media, um, not enough representation of people that look like us, even within that company. Mm -hmm. I can't speak on it for myself, but that's kind of what's stirring on in the streets. I can tell you for a fact, like when you start hearing about cranes and we're bubbling on that level, you're not gonna hear it not really representative of people of our culture. So I'll kind of just leave it there. I don't even want to talk shit about it, but mm -hmm. for me, the, the whole black thing, like when I heard Off-White, Off-White made me feel like you meant uh, a black person who was kind of mm -hmm. off black, but mm -hmm. kind of whitey. Mm -hmm. No, not bro, there's no racism, no it. nothing. But for me, it's like, nah, we black. This is how the country looks at us, this is what it is, so not like black, man, this wow. is what it is. Like I see white on shirts, but now I want you to know, black. black. And at the bottom you see Jim Crow is dead on that, exactly. that X is from one of our biggest leaders in our culture, Malcolm X. That's what it is, that's what it is. And you've done extremely well with this collection. Would you say it's been the most successful thus far? Yeah, definitely, bro. Um, and it's, it's kind of weird, we're coming out of a, a quarantine year, the entire 2020 was pretty strange, but man, like, it gave me so much energy and so much inspiration on, like, even just opening a store, dude. Like, I, I can't even speak enough for what this quarantine and this COVID-19 has done for me. In a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's a, we talked about it earlier before we got into it, it's just an opportunity of just re rebuilding, and revamping. What made you want to be able to boss up and say, I'm gonna get the store? Cause you Man. know, you, you could do the, uh, there's a lot of great brands that are online, doing great content, doing mm -hmm. social, have their online store, but to boss up and say, I'm gonna cop a store, I'm, I'm gonna do a storefront, that's a different bag. Man, I gotta be honest, dude. Uh, 
I wasn't even in a space when we, we, we got this space in a September or something like that. In September, I wasn't thinking about getting a storefront. I, you know, I was like, let me continue to build my, my online presence and mm -hmm. keep doing it this way. But man, my partner and my girlfriend, Jasmine, like, man, she pushed me, bro. She was like, baby, always preaching to me about entrepreneurship, about what we can do, about this and that. Let's just do it. So, man, like, we, we applied and, like, we got it, bro. And I was just like, what the fuck? It was mm -hmm. mind blowing, but this is what I've been working for, bro. This is, like, to answer your question from earlier, this is why I moved here. This is mm -hmm. why I left the South. Like, I mm -hmm. went from New Orleans at 19 to Houston, stayed there six years, and then came here, bro. And I've been here ever since. Five years later, four years later, I'm opening the storefront, man. So, like, I, I, I thank my girl for that, for sure, for pushing me. It's huge. The first time we met you, we saw the family. Mm -hmm. It was a unit. That was the first thing me and Kari noticed, we always say, is it was a family thing. It was mm -hmm. something that's what it is. And how has family really changed your perspective? Because obviously, you know, you're a young dude. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there's a lot of situations in life where searching for a purpose, you have a purpose. Yes. It's, it's, it's different. Yes. You know, has that changed your grind in a lot oh, of ways? Oh, man. Big time. Like, every morning I'm woken up by my baby girl, Silver, man. Like, yeah. she's like slapping me in the face and just laughing. <laughs> and I open my eyes and she's just like, has the biggest smile on yeah. her face, bro. Like, get up, she's get up, geek. let's go play. She's geek, she's yeah. hyped for the day, bro. And yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, not ready to get up. But man, every time I see that little girl every morning, bro, it just gives me purpose and more reason to like push and attain this, this generational wealth that I've always dreamed about, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to get that shit. Yeah, you chasing My family, for sure. You gotta help me out, man. I, I can't even find a shorty. I wanna text back. I'm bro, just, I'm, I'm, bro, I'm dying it, now, Bro, it dog. took me some time. That's okay, so it I gotta be patient, man. Yeah, 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 man. we in LA. That's where, we in LA. That's really what it is. Yeah, I need to go, LA. I need to go somewhere. For sure. Down. That's what it is, that's what it is. <laughs> Man, so I really appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to come in your space to be able to see this. Now, before I get out here, I gotta ask you one more question, and that is, what is next? Man, the next step, bro, is we wanna open this store, we just wanna kill, man. Like, my vision is I get the same lines Supreme gets outside of that store. Mm -hmm. No knock to Supreme's a big, big inspiration, but I'm coming for y'all next. No cap. That's what's next. No cap. You feel me? I'm coming for the Virgils of the world. That's what's next, bro. Like, no cap. That's that's my plan, man. I want cranes to be known worldwide, bro. That's what it comes down to. They, we we uh we dropping at the end of the month. We're releasing. The store is gonna be open in yes, February. They can find you here in LA. Yes, sir. The Children of Rage collection is still going crazy. Yes, sir. You see my pants. You, know you see is. my hat. You Flex. see the fit. Yeah. It's reckless hype. It's cranes. Come on, That's man. That's it, man. Stop Thank it. you, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you, brother. You, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Until next time, you know what time it is. You're in the middle with your boy Jiggy. It's reckless hype. Gang. You know what it is.